Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. As you can tell, Art Kirsch and I are with Manny Pacheco, our favorite Hollywood historian, the man of forgotten Hollywood. Manny, good to see you again. Well, I'm glad I'm not forgotten. I'll tell you that. Manny, you're, you're <laughs> not forgotten, not only not by us, but not by legions. Le that's right. Legions, and that's with a G, legions. Uh, you know, Manny, uh, dealer's choice. What do you got for us today? Well, you know, something's been gnawing at me for a, for a while now, and that's uh, uh, Disney, of course, the uh, conglomerate of all conglomerates as far as the entertainment business goes, maybe in any business, purchasing 20th Century Fox. Of course, they, you know, they had already negotiated with uh, George Lucas, and now they have a relationship with ABC and ESPN, but that wasn't enough. They had to purchase the film library of 20th Century Fox, and to me, that is fraught with peril. Why is that? Well, first and foremost, when was the last time you saw Fantasia or uh, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs on network TV? Good point. <laughs> you don't see them on network TV because unless you pay for them, you don't get to see them at all, which means you got to buy the DVD or wait for it to come back into the big no, screen. Is it, and that's on Disney Plus? Well, we're not there yet, oh, but let's, before okay. you get to Disney Plus, we're talking about just turning on your television yeah. after you've already paid for cable and you still don't get to see Disney product. And yeah. that is something that's been sticking in my craw for, since I was a kid. And that's one of the reasons one of my favorite movies of all time, Fantasia, I've probably seen it less times than any of my other favorite films from that era. And what I'm afraid is going to happen is that they're going to take the entire Fox library, and that means Shirley Temple and Betty Grable and Tyrone Power and Henry wow. Fonda and Alice Faye and yeah. uh, 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 Cesar Romero and Carmen Miranda and uh, um, uh, uh, what's his name? I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but I'll get to it. But all of these folks are going to disappear unless you pay for them on the big screen as yep. they are re-released, uh, re or you have to pay for a subscription on Disney+. Plus. Yep. But that's the way it's going, isn't it, Manny? Uh, they're not the only one. Right. Well, yeah, but I don't think that TCM is ever going to hold back on their Warner Brothers or MGM or Columbia collection. I think we're always going to be safe in seeing movies that were made, you know, from that came out of MGM, you know, just terrific films. And their library is vast. And so is Warner Brothers, for that matter. And Paramount has their own library uh, and, and their own streaming service as well. But they also have a service of free television. You can see Paramount Films on their channel. So really, the only major studio that has this issue at this point is 20th Century Fox. And, you know, I love All About Eve. I love the films directed by Joe Mankiewicz. I don't want to see them go away. All this great film noir that came out with the great scores by Alfred Newman, all gone. And I mean, to me, that that gives me that I'm going to need a Tums because that's giving me some heartburn, serious heartburn. Well, I, yeah. I don't, uh, uh, this is for the first time uh, that uh, since I've known you that you look like you're getting a little bit stuck in the past. And I agree. Uh, we all grew up, the three of us grew up with uh, free television. Everything was free. You had to watch a commercial, but everything, and you saw, eventually you saw all the movies. It was, what, uh, ABC uh, Sunday night at the movies or NBC Tuesday night, whatever. You saw all those things, okay? And so we were getting used to getting everything for, for free. It's like the internet, Facebook. You get it for free. Of course, they take all your information. So you don't have to pay for it the same way other than getting hacked all the time. But with the movies, you've got stuff uh, on Prime. You've got stuff on Netflix. And you pay for it. And, you, yeah, so, <laughs> so that makes you want to gag in a bag. But the problem is that uh, it's all changing. And now we have, uh, we used to get lots of stuff. For, you paid one fee to HBO, and then you got a lot of movies, you got programs, and now yeah. they're segmenting it all. So, I mean, isn't it just that uh, uh, it's changing? And then if they don't get enough subscribers, someone, or they can't grow, then they'll start re-releasing them. 
they'll put them on broadcast TV once every five years. Um, you know, we, well, I got an answer. We, we, I'm going to write. On. I'm going to write a letter to Disney tonight, okay, and say, Manny, Ma Manny is sad. Okay, he's not a crybaby. Well, yes. He's just sad. Art, art, art. I'm writing a letter. You're saying, you're saying stuck in the past is like it's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not a bad thing. And by the way, when was the last time Disney not going to have enough subscribers? Really? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding yeah. me? They have the greatest brand on the globe. I don't think they're ever going to not have enough subscribers, which means we're still not going to see Fantasia. And then... You know, great films. I mean, terrific 20th Century Fox films are just going to simply go away. The, the name I'd forgotten, by the way, was Don Amici. So anyway, the point of the matter is all these Fox stable of stars are, I mean, the Grapes of Wrath and the Oxbow Incident. I mean, these wonderful films that, yes, and you talk to any Turner classic movie, uh, a film fan, they want to be stuck in the past. They love being stuck in the past. Let's get stuck together. But we can't yeah. if we have to start streaming. And that's the issue. Well, Manny, the, unfortunately, uh, most people get their, quote, broadcast television over cable TV. Right. So you're paying for that. Then you're paying for the, one way or the other, you're paying for the commercials. And then you have to buy these subscription services. The trend is out there, my friend. Oh, and I get it. I mean, I understand. It's not going to change. But I would say that, Manny, I Manny, I know that that you don't go to the gym every day. We've talked about that. Okay? <laughs> but I think, though, that this is going to be a, a, a windfall for you in exercise because now you're going to have to go to get that DVD that you were saying is inconvenient now. But And they have all these things, and nobody can keep you from getting up and sticking in that little slot and watching it because I'm sure that most of these films you've either got on what was that big disc thing, uh, not Blu ray, the one before the DVDs. Uh, my, my son actually bought one of them. Uh, it's a tech VHS, hmm? <laughs> VHS. Are you talking no, no, about no, 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 it was a big disc. Uh, uh I'll, I'll get the name of You're it. You're talking about I'll send you that, but 78 RPM records, no, maybe that too. <laughs> but you, this, thankfully, you ne never got rid of your DVDs of all these things, right. No, I have a great DVD collection. You know, I, I agree. I, you know, and I do have some Fox films, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that um, if this is the way things are going, uh, for every for every Disney, there is a Netflix, and Netflix is is has a totally different philosophy. Their philosophy is. If you're a voting member of an awards show, for example, we're not going to just give you an episode to, to chew over. We're going to give you the whole season. So, I mean, Disney would never do that. Uh, yeah. so, so, so Netflix is going the opposite direction. So if you want to see original content provided by Netflix, that's good news. Amazon Prime does it to a certain extent. Hulu is yet to jump on board. Um, but I, I think Disney is going to stand pat uh, last year, when we were voting for the SAG Awards, we were lucky to get Hamilton, which is a Disney product. Uh, so maybe Disney will feed us a few crumbs here and there. Uh, I don't know. They, they, I mean, this is a policy they've had since the 1930s. This was an edict that was set down by Walt and Roy themselves. The brothers Disney felt that, you know, um, if something is going to be seen, it should be paid for. They work hard for their product. And I understand animation is not easy to create in the case of their animated features. But and they and they hire a lot of animators. So I do get that, but I mean to to permanently ban it from you know any free entity at all is it's almost cruel. I mean, right now for for Disneyland being what it is, I'm not in my happy place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's so not there forget that free, free has many different definitions. Right. And what we consider free television is commercial television. Right. We're just simply yes. paying for it a different way. Yes. With our time. Right. 
No, and you make a good point, John, and Art makes a great point that we have to move to the future. Things are going to change, and we just have to change with them. I do get that. And there are outlets of uh, that do provide maybe pirated or other ways of, of seeing things like YouTube and stuff like that. So I get it. I don't like it. But thank you for letting me get it off my chest. <laughs> well, I happen to agree with you in the sense that if they want to build that library, they want to take it in-house and control it all and make money off it. I have no problem with them monetizing it. What I do have a problem with them is when they restrict it from the public, as you point out. Why can't we see Sleeping Beauty pay on demand? Why can't I see Fantasia Pay on, pay on demand. demand. Well, that's fair. I mean, that's a that's a very fair, uh, uh, if not a solution, at least it's a compromise. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, it's it's a business, and um, they're figuring out what will make them the most money. So maybe it'll change. Right. Or maybe wow. won't. Maybe maybe they're willing to piss off um, the three or four percent of people like yourself, okay, who just want to see it all the time and. I feel restricted, and the hundreds of thousands of people who say that's okay. And uh, and the younger versions of, of folks who watch Celebrating Act Two will say, "Why are you getting so excited?" <laughs> the way it is, man. Yeah. Okay, TikTok. It's a real application. Get with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Right. I think we I think we all need to go get uh, a little bit of rum and uh, sit in our corner, suck our thumb, and take a nap and go to bed early. Ah, uh, heck with that, I'm grabbing a Valium. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon, Manny. Oh, thanks guys for letting me get, let me get that off my chest. We'll talk soon. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.